Hello everyone, welcome to Metal Net TV. I am Sarah and today I am pleased to bring you one of your absolute favorite members of the Metal Net TV family, Kane Roberts. Kane is going to be joining us for a second conversation. And before we started, I just want to remind you to subscribe to Metal Net TV. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you leave a beautiful comment for me and for Kane. But also make sure you spread the word about Metal Net TV so we can continue to get these amazing guests. Here we go. Hey, Kane, how are you doing? Hey, doing really good. Good to see you again. Good to see you as well. So we have a lot to talk about since we spoke last. Uh, yeah. A lot of cool stuff going on. Um, but let me start with this. When I talked to you last, you said there was only one band in the world you could ever possibly play with. And that was Alice Cooper Band. Yeah. And it just so happens that in this past year, uh, you rejoined Alice Cooper on tour. So yeah. I want to ask you a lot of nerdy questions about that experience. First yeah, of all, kind of crazy. That? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First of all, how I just how was it overall for you? Uh, it, you know, the thing is, you you couldn't go to a, join a, a better band of people. I mean, you know, these guys have been together. Uh, Nita, I think, was in the band so far nine years now, and and you know, so these are guys that have all been together for a long time. They all get along really well. They're all really nice, and they're all amazing musicians. So. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when Alice called me, you know, he and I were laughing. I said, OK, you know, and uh, he they just needed me for the fall because he was going to uh, play with Demi Lovato. Right. So uh, Nita was so. You know, I had to I was my job was to learn her parts. Um, I have to stand in the right spot on stage. You know, they're so good on stage. Um, it, it doesn't look choreographed. But every song, you have a place where you're supposed to be at a certain time so you don't get your head cut off by a guillotine or something. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so you know, when I got there, those were the those were the sort of marks that I had to hit. It was almost like being part of a, a Broadway play. Mm -hmm. But and and I, I looked upon it like I just wanted to fill in for Nita and, you know, do, do a good job because she does such an incredible job herself. So, right. you know, it, and it was fun. And of course, you know, uh, they're all really nice people. I became friends with the whole band. Mm -hmm. And then Alice kind of, and I kind of re-upped our friendship, which was, I thought was, was amazing. We started meeting every morning for breakfast, you know, before <laughs> he went to golf and then we went to dinner and movies, you know. So we had a great time that way, of course, you know, and Cheryl, of course, is amazing. So yeah, I had a, it was a, it was a really great time. That's amazing. So when, when you got the call, were you like, let's do this? Or did you have to think about it? Just, and we're going to talk a little bit deeper about this later in the conversation, but I know you had sort of, I'm going to call them um, complicated feelings about <laughs> being on stage or being on tour the last time we spoke with Alice. Yeah. Was it, was it like done deal? Like absolutely. Or did you have to think on it a minute? You know, you know, it's really funny. All the markers went off from my head. You know, do you want to do something live? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? You know, it's, it's Alice, you know, I, I mean, first of all, Alice and Shep Gordon and Bob Ezrin, I owe them everything, you know, mm -hmm. I owe them everything. So anything they want me to, I could be on a deathbed. I told this to Shep, mm -hmm. and if you needed me to play, I'd find a way to get there, you know? So, <laughs> um, so that was definitely right away. I said, yes, but you know, at the same time, I was like going, well, what's that going to be like, you know? And I knew my job was to get in there and not, you know, try to upset the apple cart. I had to do, you know, I had, to, I had to play all the parts the way that they were. So uh, that was the only challenge, but the only thing is all the parts were really good. So, you know, I, I had fun. I had a little trouble with the um, in-ear monitors, like kind of figuring that out because I was just used to, you know, playing, uh, you know, through the amp amps and monitors on stage and stuff like that. So that was a little bit of a challenge as well, but, you know, overall it was great. So um, this was going to be a question for later, but let me just ask you now, it sounds like you were really just stepping in for Nita and that they didn't necessarily rearrange things so that you'd be playing your old songs. No, I, was, I walked into a show that's been going on for a year or two. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to, you know, I had to, you know, I had to, I had to, you know, do, you know, play when I'm supposed to play and go on stage. You got to right. go on the stage on the right. You gotta, one of the first nights I, I got hit right below my eye with the whip like literally right below my right eye. So, you you know, you got to, you got to watch out, you know, cause there's right. a lot of stuff going on. And I remember that from before, Yeah, you know, I used to get stabbed all the time, <laughs> you know, so, uh, 
So yeah, you know, and, and by the way, it's an entirely different show. Right. You know, first of all, the audience is much different. You know, it's it's a much older audience, and uh, but you know, we did some shows, um, louder than life, and we did a show which my favorite show was the show we did with Miss the Misfits. You know, I got to say hi to Doyle and all that stuff, but you know, the audience really responded really well. And I know that uh, one of the things that, you know, I love was when Alice says, um, you know, raise your hands if you're poison. He says that to the audience during the song Poison. The whole place, every time, the whole place, they're louder than life everywhere. They all do it. Alice still has that kind of control. It's kind of incredible. Yeah. Um, so I had, there were three things that came to mind when I was thinking about you stepping back on stage with Alice. One yeah. is that the last time you were with him, you were a musical director. You had a lot more, let's say, sure. power yeah. in the relationship. You were also a writing partner, which is really significant. And you were the only guitarist. So right. those are three- Well, there was another guy, uh, you know, playing kind of in the back a little bit, uh, right. Artie. But, but yeah. I mean, you were the dude people were coming to see. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this time around, like, you knew your job. You you knew Nita was stepping away for a moment, and you had to come in. But like emotionally, did did you have that moment of like then versus now of wow, this is so different? Or oh I yeah, that. no, it was completely different. Oh, absolutely. But see, you know, I didn't I didn't go there thinking I was going to be Kane from you know back in the day. I just I was just supposed to go there and 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 fill in. So I knew that in advance, but. Yeah, I mean, it was an entirely different situation. First of all, there's three guitar players, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, at, at one point I said, hey, you think there's enough guitar solos? You know what I mean? Because, like, <laughs> you know, almost every song had three guitar solos. And, and it's just kind of, you know, I got to get used to that, which was fine because, you know, I love playing with those guys. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so, you know, and it's not like I missed, you know, the old band. Um, but it was, it was, it was not functional for me to say, oh, I missed playing what we did before because, you know, it's just not what the job was. The job was to go in there and do the current Alice Cooper band gig. And, you know, it was a lot of fun, you know, Were you the, the and, and, you know, one of the, the best nights is Nita came back and played with us. I was literally us. just going to ask you. And that. that was so much fun. <laughs> I mean, I just, I love her. She's just so great and just a, a great talent and all that stuff. So it was yeah, fun. I was going to say, because I know all those guys are so great, but I know you have uh, such a respect for Nita that not being able to share a stage with her must have been a bummer. So I'm glad you got to do that. Yeah, I was um, glad. I'm really happy to do that. Yeah, yeah. I, had a, I had an opportunity in Vancouver when we shot that video um, with Alyssa and Alice. He asked me to play with them that night, mm -hmm. but um, they had so much going on. I didn't bring a guitar. You know, I just, you know. We did, I didn't do it. I couldn't bring the gun guitar up there, which was actually showed up. It's so funny. Oh. <laughs> so um, when you when you got the call, you have a few things that you have to do. Um, first of all, were you able to rehearse with the band? You you probably had to with all the marks making I, sure. We, the right uh, I had to learn twenty six songs, you know, with the new arrangements, and mm -hmm. we had three days of rehearsal. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn, you know, a crap ton of stuff. But but. <laughs> You know that that's the gig. It's not like I have to learn, you know, uh, brain surgery. You know what I mean? It's I've been playing guitar for a couple of weeks. You know, so <laughs> so yeah. So uh, you know that. And and by the way, with this particular band, I, I could stumble all over the place. You would never know it because they're so good. So uh, you know, Chuck on bass, and of course Ryan and Tommy, just great, talented. Uh, they you know they, they play their parts so perfectly and of course Glenn's one of my favorite drummers that are alive so um yeah so I mean the, the, it was a lot to absorb uh but you know I was in a place that you know if I if my amp turned off I think the show would have been okay you know what I mean so <laughs> uh, less a little a little less pressure there um how about for your like stage clothes and your guitars I think there are a lot of people who expect to see you playing certain guitars things that used to play with Alice back in the day like oh yeah no I, I um yeah so I uh what was it um I, I I was I was in the the middle of you know trying to figure out I had to bring six guitars you know mm -hmm. and or not six I had to bring four guitars and 
you know, I'm trying to think of like, you know, which guitars to bring, you know, some of my guitars are not tour ready. They're not going to survive. And, you know, so Schechter calls me up and just says, you know, cause I know scummy love is a great guy. And he just said, Hey, if you need anything, he said, we'd like to do a deal where we give you, you know, a certain number of guitars and blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, you know, so I ended up doing that and they were just fantastic. They made everything, you know, to the specs that I wanted. So that's how that happened. And I just, I used Schecter just exclusively on the tour. That was part of the deal. And I was happy to do it. They're great guitars. Mm -hmm. I mean, how about stage clothes? Were you able to throw something together that worked? Cause they all have really specific styles and costumes. and all Yeah, I, you them. know, I, there, were, there were a couple of different things that I looked at. But I figured I'd keep it pretty, you know, low key, um, you know, dark black clothing and, and just, uh, you know, that top there with some laces on it. And I just, I didn't do anything like, you know, radical and, you know, some boots, you know. Right. And then uh, I brought my head with me. That was like good. I thought that was a good plan. <laughs> That's useful. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So overall, we had a great time filling in. Um, do you think that there might be another opportunity for you to? jump in on a tour um i you know i i don't know uh, i don't know if they would ask me you know what i mean if, if, if nita you know does another commitment and the, you know it goes against but um you know like i said if they ask me to do anything i'll do it uh, absolutely there's, there's no hesitation just be, for you know a number of reasons and you know if you look at um the landscape of that particular band and that job if you take the job it's all good Hmm. there's no negative there's, you can't even you know what I mean so yeah sure that, that would be uh, that would be a lot of fun but you know I, I'm not you know I don't foresee that I'm not expecting it you know what I mean but yeah that'd be awesome right I, I know a lot of people would love to see that um not, not to see Nita go because everyone loves Nita but just no see, no there's no more Nita opportunities go, to no. see you um, I told I said Alice you should just get me and Nita on guitar <laughs> no, go. I would never do that. <laughs> that works would, too. <laughs> they wouldn't want that. They, Tommy and Ryan are just too valuable. So they absolutely are. Um, yeah. Huge fan of all of theirs. Um, so I had mentioned that you had uh, what I'm calling complicated feelings about um, touring in that last time we talked. Um, you talked about it a little bit. And my takeaway was that you felt like, well, you did say something about it being a younger person's game, but it was really more that unless you had something to give, yeah, if you really had something to give in the moment that it sounded like you weren't like dying to get back on the road has being with had being with Alice for those um, for those weeks. Did that like light any sort of fire in you or make you want to go on the road, promote your own stuff? No, no nothing changed as a result yeah. of that. I, I, you know, I, um, I'll tell you something, the audience playing with in front of an audience is, is a phenomenal feeling, but, um, you know, the, the logistics of actually doing that in any other situation other than a band that is already existing and they have me go in and do something like I could possibly do that. But as you know, the only band that's ever hired me is Alice Cooper. So I guess, I guess it's <laughs> up to him. You should probably ask him that question. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah so you know that's 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 the way it was one of the funny things like me and chuck uh garrick were laughing about that you know just like <laughs> nobody hired me. He, he said who did you know did you play with this and uh no, nobody it's you, funny you meant it when you said it you're like alice is the only alice band is the only band <laughs> yeah because you know they back in the day you know with the way i looked and everything I didn't think of it this way, but the only band that ever would have hired me is Alice, you know, right. so I know I said that to you before, but yeah. it's really true. And, and it's a testament to the faith that you have to have to be in the music industry, mm -hmm. you know, for, you know, it doesn't matter what, what uh, sort of angle you are, like the angle that you are in the music industry, you have to you know, your passion for it has to sort of supersede anything, any, any sort of doubts or, or anything. You just gotta, you just want to do it, you know? So, uh, you know, so, you know, I, not, not to get off track too much, but I, I just, I remember when I got the first call, you know, it was an entirely different human being, me. I just mm -hmm. was kind of really hyper, really crazy. This time, you know, I'm sitting in my living room and, you know, I suddenly, Alice is on the, 
you know, FaceTime. And uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of amazing, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would imagine though, that being able to come in, play, and then like maybe go back to your hotel room or the bus, it's probably a lot less pressure this time around than it was the first time where you were coming in and you had to songwrite and be a musical director. And, you know, like Alice was kind of making a huge comeback. I mean, did you feel like this was a little bit like easy peasy compared to what you did? No, you know, it's so funny. That, that's a really interesting question. Not to, not to qualify your questions, but the, the thing is that back in the day, it was all that was my nature is always just, if it's happening, I'm there. There's no, there's no additional pressure. There's no, uh, oh, I can't believe I'm here. I don't know. I've got to try to get this job. I hope it works well. I hope I get it. It wasn't what it, the, like, like we, I can't, I, when I walked into the office uh, in, in Manhattan, you know, Alive Enterprises, you know, I see history everywhere and I'm sitting in front of Bob Ezrin. It was, I just took it in stride. Not, not an ego thing. It's not arrogance. It's just always been my nature. And when I was, you know, back in the day, that's totally what I was. So all it was for me was Alice and I hanging out. We suddenly became great friends and it just rolled out that way. And, and the best thing we did, I thought in the beginning, there were a few great songs on the Constrictor album, but the way we put together the, uh, the Welcome to My Nightmare tour, I, I mean, the Nightmare Returns, um, that was where Alice and I, I think really, uh, he, he and I creatively, it just sort of emerged. You know, if you look at the whole show and you look at the music surrounding the theatrics, everything was just, you know, woven pretty intricately. So, and, and we had to have a different sound. You know, we couldn't, you know, I told Alice, I don't want you to come back, you know, with like an oldies but goodies sound. You know, it's gotta be, you gotta compete, you know? So, um, so this time around, it, it was the same thing, you know, I, I the job was no less important. I had to learn the parts I was supposed to play. I had to hit my mark. I had to, you know, the Alice Cooper show is, is hallowed ground, you know? So I, I didn't feel less pressure, but you know, I don't really feel pressure ne ne necessarily in, in the way that some people do, so. Right, right. That's like I'm never, I don't, the, the bigger the crowd, uh, the less nervous I am. Like playing in a room for one person is more nerve wracking to me than in front of, you know, 40,000 people, whatever, whatever we were doing, you know, mm -hmm. so that's like easier. Is it because you're, a, you're, you have some level of awareness of how that one person is reacting versus a crowd of energy? Yeah, well, you know, if, if you, if, if I write a song, and I'm playing it alone. Mm -hmm. I will say, hey, this sounds really cool. You know, I played it a hundred times, you know, oh boy, I'm really great. Then one person comes in the room. I go, hey, listen to the song. The song sounds entirely different to me. Hmm. I mean, that's how much of an influence, you know, people have. When it turns into this like mass of people, it's just becomes this movie that you're luck lucky enough to be in. And I, I just look at, you know, I look at that, screen you know I look at all those people and you know it's it's just a natural thing for you to just get sucked into the jet stream and it just becomes fun you know so so uh so yeah I mean just you know, the sheer numbers of it don't make it uh nerve-wracking to me you know there are musicians like that the bigger the show they get they get tense um I go in the opposite direction for some reason I, I know Alice doesn't even nothing crosses his mind. If, he, if the audience is really small, he'll play a perfect show for that small audience. You, you know what I mean? He'll work that crowd properly. Mm. So, yeah. Well, uh, you had, uh, you just worked with a great group of people, but in the past you worked with some equally amazing people, Kip Winger right. and Ken right. Mary. And last time you had talked about how you'd love to get together with the two of them and do something. Have you yeah. guys had any conversations as of late? Oh yeah, no, I, I, I'm, uh, uh, you know, I mentioned to you, I'm working and writing and stuff. I have a few songs that I'm going to do and shoot videos for them. And uh, there's one that's a trio with, with the three of us. Oh, cool. it's, and it's very, very, yeah, it's pretty, you know, hardcore. There were, there were some, uh, you know, I, like, for example, Hendrix, it's not going to sound like Hendrix, but just, you know, guitar, bass, and drum is such a, uh, 
an incredible combination, you know, because, it, you know, when you add, when you add keyboards, um, it takes up a lot of the, t uh, uh, the, a lot of the space, you know, the, the different tones you can do, it just saturates it. So this is a much more organic and, and, and in this particular instance, it'll be a lot, you know, a lot more powerful. So that's what we have planned, you know, for me playing with those guys. I, I don't like them personally, <laughs> no, no, okay. no, but uh, I think you talk to both yeah, of them but, every single day. <laughs> you know, but they have they have uh, new um, uh, records out. I know uh, Ken's Fifth Angel album just came out, and uh, Kip has a new record out. I know he has um, you know two videos uh, that just came out as well. So very cool. Um, so it sounds like they're playing on your you know your upcoming album, but yeah, any... it'll be that that'll be what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's and not it, an album. I'm just going to record. I, I, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to go with a record company again. It's too, you know, I'm not. Okay. Uh, you know, that doesn't work for me very well. Because you told me so. they loved you so much last time. Yeah, I know they were great. Hey, look at them. <laughs> totally fine. Good people. You know, um, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it sounds like right now it's it's that they're going to play with you on this one song. But you're not. Uh, no plans to form a little band or oh play. geez no I no i wouldn't think so no no all right well we can hope we can hope for that yeah. in the future right um so you started talking about new music um how did the new normal what was the reception like that uh to that album that you put out a couple years ago did you get the reception you were hoping for um you know in truth yes uh you know i after i did the video you know my relationship with the record company completely uh, dissipated so um, uh, after I did the first video, you know, if you can get, you know, close to half a million on your first video in, I don't know, 40 years, I mean, it had been a long time. Yeah. I needed to follow it up with two more videos. That's what I had, had to do. So, uh, I, you know, I, I didn't have a record company anymore, like immediately. So, um, so yeah, so, you know, in, in, in the face of like what was going on at the time, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. Yeah, I'm happy oh, with the yeah. response it got. And I'm mostly happy with the music on it. So, uh, and, you know, the fact that I was able to pull off getting Alyssa White Blues and Alice Cooper, you know, in the same video and song, I thought that was kind of a cool feat, you know, so. Yeah. So there's a lot of, lot of pluses. And, you know, I got to meet uh, Alyssa and Doyle you know, two amazing people. And, you know, so it was good. It was good. All your voices sounded great together on that song. Oh yeah. I mean, you geez, have something good. distinct to bring and, and amazing, they amazing musicians. The two of them. Incredible. Yeah. Um, so you had last time we talked, you talked about how you had already started the songwriting process for the next project, even though you were still very much, you know, uh, promoting that album. Um, how has the songwriting been going? And are any of the songs that you had written, like let's say two years ago, still yeah. one of the ones you're considering or have you kind yeah, of- Yeah, there's one that survived. Uh, there's a newer one. Um, I'm actually thinking of uh, getting another singer, but I, I'm, I'm gonna have to find, trying to figure out who would be great, you know, great for a very heavy song. It'd be really nice. Um, and then, you know, I have some videos in mind, some uh, people that I want to shoot. So, uh, you know, for me, it's like a gradual process. You know, there's no record company schedule or touring schedule down my neck. So, you know, so it, it'll come, something will come out this year without a doubt. So oh, really? okay. see, see what I'm talking about. See, I, you know, the, the last video I did, um, you know, I had to go to Vancouver, so I couldn't use, you know, my friends here that, that you know, I do stuff with. So uh, this one, you know, will have a much more controlled environment. Uh, it'll, it'll be it'll be good. So um, do you already know which song you're going to do the video for? Or is this just something you have planned for the future? Uh, yeah, I mean, but I, you know, I don't want to give you I have a title, but it, it may go away. OK, but 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 I mean, you have like you're starting to think about the actual video and the making of the video. And getting it oh done. yeah no and i know i know this one uh dancer that would be unbelievable for the video so i'm oh, trying cool. to arrange that as well so nice very good yeah um are you writing with a lot of different people on this album or are you doing this more on your own uh well the the kid that i wrote um uh the beginning of the end mm -hmm. i like writing with him his name's evan magnus 
So uh, I've been writing with him. I just did some writing with Alice Cooper. So, uh, you know, I'm writing with different people, you know. Is, is the writing you're doing with Alice for your projects or for no. his? No. Cool. All right. So you have a, you really have a lot going on right now with um. Well, yeah, I mean, your music and writing and all that. I'm, you know, taking a lot of drugs. Uh, I go to the grocery <laughs> store a lot. I mean, I, literally every day. I'm the worst shopper in the world. Are you really? Are oh you my god! Who really enjoy. I, I went to the grocery store yesterday, and yeah. I have to go today. I, you know, I, I for, I just, I covered yesterday. I don't know if okay. anybody else does that. It's just every day I go, I got to go back. That's unbelievable. It's very European of you just to go to the market and buy what you need. <laughs> well, that's, you know, I'm that's not the walking fantasy through of Europe like, we're sold. I don't know if they actually do no, that, but. <laughs> I'm not walking through some food fair with like, you know, lo like loaves of bread <laughs> sticking guess. out of a bag and, you know, <laughs> making friends with the, you know, oh, the parsley is very good today. Uh, you know, I'm not doing that. You know. That's funny. Um, but uh, are, are you a foodie by chance? I, I feel like we had a conversation where you said you keep your food really simple and healthy. Yeah, I um, I like bland food. Yeah, you told me that. I, I love sushi and stuff like that, but I, I love yeah. uh, bland food. So I make, I, you know, I'll get uh, different, uh, you know, I've started to do a little bit more uh, vegan. Alyssa's mom uh, helps me with stuff. So I'll, I'll you know, do a whole thing with, with tofu and vegetables. Nice. and rice and all this stuff and then you know i'll have that for like you know three days you know that sort exactly. of a thing so like your meal prep you just get it yeah done it's like meal it. prep is what yeah. it is yeah. yeah is is it that you enjoy more bland food or is it that you're you're really focused on health and that's why you oh i always food? preferred bland oh really okay yeah it's a whole thing of like you know let's say you get a, a cheeseburger yeah you got to stuff that in your mouth and then you got to jam the fries in there while the burger's in your mouth. Not anybody knows about this, but see you that that you level of sort of you don't have to do it that zone, way. You know, that's like like so if I'm eating out at dinner and somebody like wants to, you know, a piece of my broccoli or whatever, I, I don't like that because I have a whole timing thing with gotcha. the dinner. You know, so yeah. with that one piece wrong, I have to adjust the portion uh, that I take for the rest of the dinner. I don't know well, what I'm talking about. If you're, eating steamed vegetables, <laughs> if you're eating steamed vegetables and plain meat, I don't think anybody's stealing off your plate. No, but but um, but yeah, no, I, I I've always liked you know bland. I don't I don't know why. I mean, look, I I like desserts, you know. Yeah. But I don't. But if a dessert like the best desserts I've ever had were in Japan, because they're they're half sweet. It's the same stuff. See. But everything's half sweet. It's it's if you get like a cream puff or something it's like amazing you know for some reason well, in the well, states they gotta put a pound a of sugar and everything what yeah, was you that and i could never split a dessert because i like american desserts because we put tons of sugar in everything <laughs> oh yeah well what is it uh claim jumper have you ever been to one of those no what's that if you got a uh a bowl of spaghetti uh -huh. it's literally the size of a basketball like oh, every wow. portion you get on every meal is massive <laughs> so claim jumper all right, I have to keep that in mind. But um, yeah. no, that's it's interesting. It's interesting to hear how different people eat. I'm definitely a foodie, so I, I I insist every meal be like super flavorful and like almost gourmet. <laughs> what about what about um, coffee? Okay, so funny thing, I um, I'm very caffeine sensitive. So I, yeah. if I drink decaf after 10 a.m., I'm up all night long. So I, I have to be careful with coffee. I do like it, but I am one of those people that has a little coffee with my cream and sugar. Yeah. Um, so I'm not like, I, I enjoy, I know a good coffee versus a bad coffee and I enjoy it, but I'm, I, I'm not like, I don't exist on it like most people do. Cause I have to be, I'm the opposite. I have to be really careful with coffee, chocolate, yep. tea, even decaf. I see it. Yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't get me wired either. So, you know, people need their yeah. caffeine to keep going. Well, see, you know, like what will happen to me is like, like it's, it's, for example, it's leg day. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just kind of beat. I'm exhausted. You know, my, yeah. my I might be sore because I had a long workout yesterday. So I'll drink an energy drink. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that's something you can't do, but, but there's a drink called uh, Redline. Mm -hmm. And my, you know, I'm not recommending it to anybody, but you, you're only supposed to drink half the bottle. Okay. It's that strong. 
And I, that my first time doing it, I drank the whole bottle. And I was at the gym going, what the fuck is this? Is this like crystal meth? I, I couldn't believe And then I read that, you know, you're only supposed to drink half. But I'll do that just because you, you really can't do legs and have kind of a lethargic, you know, right. you can't be tired like that. I, I don't recommend energy drinks, but, you know, leg day, I'll, I'll do one. So is that caffeine and protein or just caffeine? Just caffeine and some some vitamins and minerals okay. and stuff, but it's mostly just, you know, wake that would kill me. Up. That would literally what? kill me. I would be nauseous for three days and completely. Yeah, no, it's just it's just yeah. wake the fuck up. It's it's total nuclear. Yeah. 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 Um, so I did so, want to ask you about uh, weightlifting because obviously you're you've n- been known for somebody who did like the bodybuilding and it was a big part of your image. Um you clearly still go to the gym and work out, but are you on that level that you used to be on when you were, let's say, in your twenties or thirties, or are you doing something differently now? Um, well, yeah, that? no, it's I'm older, so it's it's a it's a different thing now. Now, it, back in the day, I used to go, I started going heavy because I was with you know bodybuilders that were competing in the Olympia, you know, like the the biggest, you know. So, but then you know, at one point, you know, I I remember this specifically, and it's funny because. Somebody asked me what music I listened to in the gym. And I said, if, if I'm going to get under 405 pounds in a squat, it has to be Metallica. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that, that's funny because I was at a show that they came to and they heard that. And mm-hmm. they said, you know, it was kind of cool for them to read, which I thought was cool because I'm a big Metallica fan. But um, I squatted, well, I think it was like 415. And when I stood up, I, you know, I got that low squat and I stood, I put it and I said, I'm never doing that again. It's, it's like your spine's not made for 400 pounds. You know what I mean? Or yeah. mine isn't. So I kept things, uh, you know, like uh, bodybuilders will know what this is, but, uh, you know, I squatted 315, like really strict low squats for 30 reps once, which was, a, so, you know, that's a lot of reps for that weight. But I started backing off and just going a little bit lighter. So to this day, that's what I do. I'll, I'll have heavier days. Right. But, you know, I'm not trying to bench, you know, 350 or anything anymore. You know, I'm, I might 225 and above that. That's kind of what I'm doing. I'm just trying to stay in that kind of uh, functional shape because, you know, right. as you get older, you know, your your joints and tendons, you know, you don't want to mess with them. So, and, you know, one of the things, I mean, not that people will listen to this interview for bodybuilding tips but you know one of the things that i learned is that you have to really once you once you get the weight off the rack or even before you start you have to line up your body you got to get the foundation really secure you know Mm -hmm. so that you're not at a funny angle or one foot's at a weird weird position you got to really line your spine uh, up so that you're you can handle the weight so yeah um yeah. So, so now, I, you know, I, sometimes I'll do sets of, you know, 50, 60 reps, you know, so it just depends on how I feel that day. So, so whatever feels right for your body. So you're, you're doing heavy weights, but not like you're not doing he- No, I, I'm not going for the super heavy. heavy. Yeah. Right. 225 is not heavy on the bench. It just isn't, you know, for some people it is, but you know, not really. Yeah. Um, and Another thing that we talked about last time, uh, we talked a lot about your early days. That's like one of my favorite topics when I'm talking to a musician. Um, But one thing we didn't talk about was sort of the making of Kane Roberts. So you talked a lot about like practicing and going to school and deciding to leave school in Boston so you can move to New York and start your career in that. Um, But there are a few other things, especially in the 80s, where uh, I feel like image was so important and so much a part of what we're doing. And you made a choice to rename yourself Kane Roberts and you made a choice to, at some point in your life to start bodybuilding. I don't know if that was, you had already been doing that when you were in Massachusetts or if that started later, but I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. And were those choices that you were already making? Cause you always say that, um, you know, Alice Cooper band is the only band that could ever hire you because of the way you look, did you already have that physique when you got that call uh, from Alice and all that? Or is that something? Well, I, yeah, I had know? started lifting. Okay. And yeah. I mean, uh, and, and, you know, my early experiences with music, you know, were Jimi Hendrix and Led Zeppelin and, you know, all my bands as a kid, you know, I, I was doing all like, you know, classic rock and all that stuff. So, um, 
but um, I was also listening when I went to I went to the New England Conservatory and it was uh, it was all jazz. I mean, that's what I was listening to. I was learning a tremendous amount of theory and some classical and stuff. And then uh, and then I went to New York and then that's you know I started lifting in New York mm -hmm. and then that's when Alice called me. So it was it was one of those things. And you know, I I kind of knew. Um, I kind of knew that uh, uh, that you know that my image was not going to be normal, right. and and I you know I like that. I, I didn't want to fashion my guitar playing. I mean, if you listen to my guitar playing, I don't really sound like too many other people. And it's the same thing with my look. I didn't I don't I didn't want to be derivative uh, too much. My my friend uh, Tim Capello, he, he was in the, the he was with uh, uh, Tina Turner played sax and you know he lifted weights too so we you know we became friends and uh, I think there was some influence there as well but you know um yeah so you know when I debuted with Alice you know everybody was what the fuck is this you know <laughs> um, you know so I judge I don't know if you John McCurry plays guitar with Cindy Lauper mm -hmm. or he did back in the day he was the guy with the red hair that was all combed over to one side I don't know if you remember him but you know back and you know in, in her biggest success years it was John was there fantastic guitar player he played on uh, Fighter mm -hmm. and a couple of the songs on my Saints and Sinners album but he said you know he didn't know me but he said when I saw that first video of you he, he said ah the music business is over <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny and it is, you know, so no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, it took I'm, a few years for him to be right. <laughs> yeah, it took a long time, but I finally got it done, you know. Um, yeah. So what made you decide to change your name and where did you get it from? Where did you get Kane from? Uh, okay, well, Alice and I, I'll tell you the exact story. I've told it before. Alice and I were sitting by the pool at Shep Gordon's house. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's up in the hills, in Hollywood Hills. Um, he's sold it, but since then, but... Um, and Alice used to own the house. And, you know, a funny story is uh, Chef said that they were, after he bought the house from Alice, they were excavating around the pool to try to, you know, get, because the grass was kind of dead and you know, all this stuff. And they hit something when they were digging there. And they went down and they found like a row of these giant bass speakers that Alice put down there so people could feel the bass beneath their feet at a party. Okay. <laughs> and I was, you know, like, how long did that last? The wood was all rotted, you know, you know what I mean? It was just unbelievable. Um, but uh, yeah, so, you know, Alice and I are sitting there by the pool and I don't know what we were doing. I was reading a comic book or something. And he said, he said, Kane, you know, what, what are we, we got to come up with a name. Wait, what are you going to call yourself? And he didn't say Kane, you know. So right. I said, well, hey, look, I said, "This Robert Kane, like that, right? <laughs> Bob Kane was the was the author of uh, of Batman. Mm -hmm. So I made I said, how about Kane Roberts?' And he said, "That's good enough." And so that <laughs> ended that up easy, being the, huh? yeah. yeah. Did that feel right to you? I mean, you pitched it, so you must you must have liked it at least somewhat, right? I thought it was thought it was cool. Yeah, yeah. I like the name Kane. It's a good name. It is a good name. How long did it take you to get used to people calling you Kane? Uh, pretty much right away. It wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I wasn't in love with my other name. Okay. So, so, so you were <laughs> no, ready. You were ready for the change. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, did, so, did Alice but, get it right away or did he keep forgetting? What? No, he called me Kane right from the, right from that day. So interesting. See, you would think it, I would think it would trip him up for a little while until he, until nah, he, <laughs> nah, he and I still like, we have, you know, we don't re usually call each other by our names. Uh, we don't touch. Like every time we see each other, we go like, wow, hey, look out. You know? So That's what, Did you feel differently once you decided your name, your first name is going to be Kane? Like, did you, did you carry yourself any differently or? No. No. No, it was, it was, it was, it was just, just like, natural, I, I, I don't right. love my, my, yeah, my natural, given yeah. name and I need something new and this works. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it seemed okay. Yeah. Yeah. You really are. I mean, I started feeling different when I started getting really big. Yeah. 
there's a picture of me in black and white with the gun guitar and I'm not wearing a shirt. And I think I weighed like 230 pounds, which, you know, when I started lifting, I was like 170. Okay. So you can imagine that's a lot of steak, you know? So when I, I came out to California, you know, I'm lifting at all the, the gym at Gold's gym. And then somebody said, you should try some steroids. So I started doing that. And, you know, and I, I didn't, I didn't take it to the extent that these other guys do. I just kind of fooled around with it a little bit, but geez, I, you know, I, my body responded to it really well. So. Oh, did it? Yeah. I, I don't do it anymore, but you know, it was one of those things. And, you know, everybody said, you know, did you experience roid rage? I, I, I really didn't, you know, I, I didn't get any of that stuff. So, so you and they you say some of... other things that's supposed to happen, but it, it doesn't really happen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I think everybody knows what you mean by that. <laughs> one guy, this one um, guy in Ireland said, uh, did you ever worry about the side effects of, of steroids? Mm -hmm. And I said, look, you really think that if I found a drug, I don't care what it does that makes my dick smaller, you think I'm going to do that? You know what I mean? It's like, I said, the guys are balanced face down on their dicks. You know, you can tip them over really easily. I said, no, that, that doesn't happen. So I said, otherwise, uh, I would have quit like immediately. So, yeah. uh, but you did say it made you feel different. How, how was it different? Was it like physically you were carrying yourself differently or did you just feel like a different? Yeah, kind of when you person? get that big, it's a different thing. It's like, you ever, you ever see like a really big bodybuilder try to dance, you know? There's certain things you can't do, you know, and they'll, they'll some of these contests they have, you know, they, they'll do a little dance and snapping their fingers on the head. That's not a good visual, <laughs> you know, so you just have to, you just have to like Doyle is a good thing. He kind of stomps mm -hmm. around and punches the guitar, you know, mm -hmm. so it's just, it's just be, the body language just. It's just naturally it becomes different. You, you can't help it, you know, I, th I think and we always make fun of like we that. always made me and my, my buds <laughs> always made fun of, you know, guys that you know, they'd walk with their arms out yeah. like they were huge yes. and, you know, yeah. it's like pretty funny, but, you know, but some of the guys had to, you know, right. but, you know. I always wonder how much of that is put on and how much of that is physically that their arms. Most really of it's put on. Most of yeah. it's put on. You can tell the guys that really, you know, are like that. There's a guy, Jay Cutler. You probably don't know who that is, but you know, mm -hmm. the guys I trained with, Tony Pearson and Bertel Fox, so the, you know, um, and by the way, Bertel, uh, almost won the Olympia. He was massive, really big. And uh, he, he just got out of jail. He had gotten some trouble in, in Haiti. So he was there for a number of years, but he just got out. So I'm glad to hear that. So that's good. Um, so you said you never competed, but could you have if you wanted to, or would you have had to push yourself way further? No, nah, I could never, I could, no. I could never do that. And yeah. you know, it's really funny. In bodybuilding, so much of it is, political just like all sports oh, yeah. like these people don't get to where they want to go entirely on ability and even if they're just fantastic it may not happen for them if they don't play ball in a lot of different areas you know so uh you know the music industry is like that you know you have to you have to learn how to you know i have trouble doing that that's why I like you know but but um yeah no i never i never wanted to and i i know i couldn't it's it's very very difficult very difficult the last month before a contest is like almost impossible so yeah yeah interesting um so i just want to go back to the new music for a minute um last time you put out an album you were uh you called yourself a two-bit nostradamus because you somehow managed to figure out what was about to happen in the world I'm call so yourself weird the normal the masks and everything i'm almost afraid to ask you what you're writing about can you just call the next album like cupcakes and frosting or something i know you know like uh Alyssa said that to me she, she said you should do a, a new song called everything's okay now <laughs> I think you should. I think you I, have well, the power. You know, the the mask, the blood, the new normal, mm -hmm. beginning of the end. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> pretty wild, you know. It it really was. Are there any themes though that you've been inspired by for this new album um, that we're going to be hearing? I I think it's going to be one of those moments where. 
you know, you just sort of absorb everything that's going on in life. And um, it just creates kind of an energy. So you know, there's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of great things that are happening. So I kind of decided to just, you know, go by the way I, I'm, I'm feeling. And then, you know, in terms of a technical musical sense, I wanted to do that trio with uh, Ken, with Ken and, and Kip, Kip just, just because, you know, we did a, um, we, that album, Raise Your Fist and Yell, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the way it was uh, mixed, you know, it's a, it's a fine mix. I'm just saying the way it was mixed, you, you couldn't hear half the stuff that we were doing. So I, I want to sort of correct that with this song. It's not going to be like a music, exercise it's just it's just the the power that the three of us i think can generate would be awesome yeah um and i think you i think you sort of indicated this but i want to make sure i understood are you going to be putting out singles and not putting out like yeah a, just i'm uh, probably album? three tops and each one will have uh, a video right right yeah. you, had, you had said that last time that you had you had thrown out the number five last time and it would be great to have five songs and each of them have yeah i think it's going to be end up it's going to end up being three you know so yeah that's some uh financing involved so you know it'll be good right very good uh and so no title album titles or anything like that yet i have <laughs> one song called i have one song called through the dirt okay but but that's you know i don't know if that's going to survive okay all right, so we wait and see. But you did but say I'm, gonna, I, I'm trying to, um, you know, Glenn Sobel, if he's not busy, said he would play on it. Oh, cool. You know, so I, you know, different guys, and you know, now that I met so many great musicians, you know, with Tommy and Chuck and Ryan, I can maybe you know enlist them on some of the stuff as well. So yeah, that would be that would be very very cool to see. All right, so what we have to look forward to then. And I'm I not going to pay him though. I'm not paying him. I swear to God, forget that. To throw that. meat at them. That's what musicians are asking me for money already. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Funny. <laughs> um, so I know you're morally opposed to recaps, as you had mentioned to me before we started this interview. Sure. So I'm going to recap right now. Um, so we're looking forward to new music from you. Looking forward to new music. This year. For, oh, this year. So this year, 2023, or this year? In the next no, I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it done before Christmas. Nice. Very good. Very good. Um, and also, you're laughing because you're going, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm laughing just because the last time we talked, you said you get things done when you get things done. Yeah, no, that's what happens with me. So, you know, I got other <laughs> stuff I'm doing. Anyway. Yeah, no, we're looking forward to it. I know everyone's really excited that you're doing T-shirts. Um, so yes, I will put the, the information below. Yeah. Agent Royale online. Agent That's Royale. That's right. You know, and it'll be below. Like, like if you walk into a place that said ye old shoppy, you know, it's like Agent Royale, Royale online. And, you know, we have more designs coming, but uh, there's two that are kind of popular. One of them is a blue one, and me with that sort of a classic gun guitar pose. Yeah. And the other one is uh, RTFO, Rock the Fuck On. So, yes. yes. Should be good. There's, there's, there's a third one, but that's. The, the third one is is called Go Find a War. So, right. but we have a really good Go Find a War design coming. So, um, I, I like that that title. So it's I like good. it. <laughs> so there's three right now in the shop. There's two more coming. So there'll be five in total that folks can buy. Yeah, no, there'll be more than five. But actually, okay. there's three in the shop. There should be four in the shop now. Oh, really? I'll double uh, One of the two RTF uh, Rock the Fuck On shirts. Um, one of them is more color. Oh, okay. um, but the one that uh, that girl modeled on Instagram that I posted is is black and white. Okay, got you. Cool. Um, yep. Any guitar picks, patches, that kind of thing? Or are you keeping it? Simple? Yeah, you know, I have a whole bunch of picks. Um, you know, I'm trying to get the merchandise thing together. So, uh, you know, we're working on that. You know, we're going to have it together definitely by the time the song comes out. Nice. I think maybe the thing with um, Kip and Ken might be the first thing. So we'll see. Oh, nice. Yeah, that'll be exciting. I'm looking forward to I'm looking yeah. for, forward to whatever you do. Um, yeah, but, thank you. Yeah, um, but thank you so much uh, for coming back on. You are hands down the most requested guest to come back. Oh, really? Hands down, yes. I all the time bring you came know, back, bring came back. I gotta I be honest with you. Too. You know, when I look in the mirror, I go, hey, it's you again. 
No, no, no. I'm kidding. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's really no, nice really, to hear. People are going to be so excited. I, I haven't told anybody yet because um, yeah. I just like to make sure I have it recorded before I tell anybody who's coming. But no, you were hands down the most requested. And the request started like the week I had you on. Like, Oh, really? We're ready for a part two and they've been asking for you. So I'm really excited. No, that I, hope, I hope I gave everybody the information, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, pick on me uh, in, in Instagram and Facebook. I love hearing from everybody and uh, really thanks. This is a great opportunity. I always love talking to you, but you can tell. So it's not. Uh, I, I have such fun. With by the you way, I turned talk. down so many people with these. Do you? So not you. Yeah. I feel special. Thank you. No, that really means a lot to me because, you know, I've told you before, I'm a great fan of yours and uh, I love your songwriting, love your voice, love your guitar, I love everything. Thanks. About yeah, you, that's so. nice. I have fun talking to you. So yep. you can come back whenever you want. And I guarantee you the minute I, I share this up with everybody, they're going to be like, when's he coming back for a third time? Yeah, <laughs> so. I'll come back in like 10 minutes. Sounds good. I will be calling you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, it's so great to see you, Kane. Just hang out for a minute after we say goodbye to the audience. But I just want to okay. remind everybody to leave a really beautiful comment for Kane because you asked for him. He came back and you got to leave nice comments for him. You got to leave some nice comments for me and make sure that you are subscribed to MetalNet TV. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed today's conversation with Kane Roberts. Remember to subscribe to MetalNet TV. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you leave a nice comment for the both of us and also spread the word about the channel. See you soon.